glad that so many of you could make it and I want to assure you of our prayers uh, for anyone that was affected by the rain and the flooding. We come together as a community to ask God uh, for help, right? We make, by our presence here, we make the prayer with our actions that we made uh, with our mouths during the responsorial psalm. Lord, come to my aid. Ask God to comfort us in this time. I want to focus on this week's gospel, particularly where Jesus says, I've come to set the earth on fire, and great in my anguish, great is my anguish until it is accomplished. And to do this, I want to talk about, talk about three things that get in our way in trying to live lives of holiness and trying to grow in our spiritual life. The first obstacle to that growth is a lack of zeal or a lack of desire. Jesus says that he came to set the earth on fire. And we know that this obviously doesn't mean that he wants to light everything on fire. We know that this is a spiritual meaning. He wants to set our hearts on fire with love for God, with a desire for God. And that desire for God is lacking, and that pains God, right? That pains Jesus. How I wish it were already ablaze, he says. How happy it would make me to see people loving the Father. People today are passionate about so many things, right? We see people very passionate about watching the Olympics, seeing the U.S. win all these gold medals. People are very passionate about food, passionate about money, even passionate about catching stupid little Pokemon. But there is a serious lack of passion in a lot of ways for God. And whenever we find ourselves in a situation, I always suggest that we get to know the saints. Right? The saints, above all, had this great desire for God. And that is what drove them, right? That's what led them to do all the wonderful things that they did for Him. And so we do this by reading the lives of their saints. I have a couple of go-to saints at any time I'm kind of, you know, worn out or just lethargic. I read them and they always kind of inspire me, right? I see their desire and it makes me want to love God more. I might not act on it right away, but it at least gives me that desire. And so we need to pray, too, for that desire, right? The desire to love God, asking Him to give it to us. The second obstacle that we can encounter when we try to grow in our faith is a lack of discipline. And this can stem certainly from that first one, right? From a lack of zeal. If we're not excited about something, then we're not going to be very disciplined about doing it. Someone who isn't passionate about playing football, right, isn't going to wake up in the hot days of the summer and go work out at 5 a.m., run stadiums and do all these other crazy things that they do. You have to be passionate about it in order to have that discipline. And so that zeal can help, but it's not an automatic fix. We can be passionate about something, particularly about God. We can want to grow in holiness, but we can lack the discipline to get off of our phone, right? To stop looking at Facebook, to stop, stop, not stop, to stop Snapchatting and all these other things that we let get in the way of our focusing on God. We can love God, we can have a desire for Him, but not be disciplined enough to not hit the snooze button five or six or seven times to get up and pray in the morning, right? And so we need to have a discipline. And that's something that comes with time. Right? We don't just automatically get discipline overnight. It comes by doing things over and over. Pope Francis has referenced several times this idea of a throwaway culture that we live in. Right? That we can just get rid of things. And I think that a lot, in a lot of ways this leads us to a lack of discipline. Right? We think if it breaks, we'll just buy a new one. Right? If this doesn't work out, I'll just move on to something else. Last week I talked about the precepts of the church. Right? And one of those is that we're to obey the church's uh, days of fasting and abstinence. And a lot of people, I think, see these rules, these laws, as kind of outdated. Right? Some hold over from the medieval times and they don't apply to us. 
But I think that these are incredibly important, especially for this concept of discipline. Right? If I can't tell myself no to eating meat on Fridays, if I can't tell myself no to what the two days a year where we're supposed to fast, can't tell myself no to food on those days, then I'm probably not going to be a very disciplined person. Right? If I can't do that, then how am, I gonna, how am I gonna tell myself no to staying in bed instead of praying? How am I gonna tell myself no to sin that looks so tempting sometimes? Right? We need to develop that discipline in order to be able to tell ourselves no. So even though they seem very small and archaic, these practices are important in our spiritual growth. The third thing I think that hinders our growth in the spiritual life, which I think is probably the biggest obstacle, is our lack of perfection. The fact that we're not there yet, that we mess up. We're a people of immediate results. We want that instant gratification. I want good things now. We don't like when something can't be fixed right away. And as a priest, I hear these struggles in the confessional all the time, right? People come in and they confess and they become frustrated because they say, you know, Father, I've been struggling with this sin or that sin for so long. I've confessed it over and over again. I really want to stop, but I just can't seem to do it, right? I keep falling back into the same thing. They hate committing it, but they can't seem to overcome it, and they get discouraged, But it shouldn't be discouraging, right? It's a challenge for us, and we like adventure, right? If we could do everything, we'd probably get bored. So we need something to strive for. I mentioned last week also that I love baseball. And I was all right. I was good enough to make the team in high school and play a whole lot, but I made the team. But I didn't make it until my sophomore year. Freshman year, I didn't make the team, but I didn't give up, right? I didn't quit. What did I do? Well, for my birthday, I asked my mom and dad to buy me a nice glove. I got involved with someone who had played at UL, and he taught me how to hit, because apparently that's pretty important for making a baseball team. Right, so I worked at it. I tried harder. And I tried to overcome that obstacle that was in my way. And so when we sin, it's a reminder to us that we still have room to grow. It's a reminder to us that we're not quite there yet, that we have something to work on. It's also a reminder for us that it's not all about us, right? I have to take those steps. I have to incorporate discipline into my life. But we also rely on God's grace. And we need to ask him for that grace to be able to love him more. So how do we work on overcoming these obstacles? I gave a few suggestions in the course of the homily, but I want to give a few more now. The first one is that we need to pray. It might seem kind of simple, it might seem obvious, but I think at times it's too obvious and we can overlook it. But if we want to grow in our faith, then we have to pray. We can't complain about not growing in our spiritual life, not growing in holiness, if we're not giving time to God every single day in prayer, right? And as a priest, I have to kind of remind myself of this often, right? The alarm clock analogy I use wasn't something I just thought up. I'm bad at that. And so just last week, I had to say, all right, I need to get out of bed every morning and pray. It's something we have to do. It's essential. The second thing I would suggest is that we go to Mass one more day each week. If we want to grow in holiness, we need God's grace. We need his help. We can't do it on our own. And grace comes to us most especially through the sacraments. So receiving our Lord in the Eucharist one more time a week, going to Mass, receiving that grace can help us to overcome those obstacles. Again, receiving grace through the sacraments, we go to confession regularly. To admit the times when we fall, admit when we slip up and commit ourselves to trying to overcome it once again. If you like to read, if you don't like to read, I still suggest it. Uh, There's a great little book called Searching for and Maintaining Peace. It's by Father Jacques Philippe. It's a wonderful book, and my second favorite thing about it is it's about 80 pages. Very small, very easy to read. 
but it's wonderful about letting us know how we can continue to grow in holiness in the midst of being sinful people. Because this side of heaven, unless you're the Blessed Virgin, we're all going to sin. We need to learn how to deal with it, how to try to overcome it, and how to continue to grow in holiness as we do that. And this is not something to do, but rather something to remember. That discouragement is not from God. Discouragement is from the devil. When we sin, God is always inviting us back, always welcoming us, always trying to move us to repentance. The devil is the one that tries to keep us away, especially from confession. Right? He makes us feel like we're terrible people. Oh, you've confessed that so many times. The priest is going to get mad at you. I don't think I've ever gotten mad at anyone in confession. So come back, tell the devil to go away, and admit your faults, and recommit yourself to living that life of holiness. Remember this the next time you fall. That the pain that we feel when we fall is the same pain that we hear Jesus feeling in the gospel today, right? That he has this anguish until his mission is accomplished. And his mission is our holiness, right? To get us to heaven. And so our best response to falling is to recommit ourselves to loving Christ. Our best response to falling is to rekindle that fire in our heart so that we can do our part in helping to set the world on fire with love for God.